How do we experience God? Our readings today give us a few insights in how we can experience God and how we can experience the Holy Spirit in our lives. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord um, and we conclude today the Christmas season. Prior to Christmas, we celebrated um, and we prepared for Christmas with the Advent season. And one of the, the big characters or personalities we hear during the Advent season is St. John the Baptist. And we hear during the Advent season the reading we had as our first reading today. Prepare in the wilderness a way for the Lord, make a straight highway for our God across the desert. And our gospel today reminds us of the role of John the Baptist again. Preparation is an important part and an important way of experiencing God and of experiencing the spirits of those who've come before us. We need to prepare, prepare our lives for a life of goodness. And part of that is that we put aside things that are not of God, that are not of goodness, and we put those out of our lives. So we're called to prepare. So preparation is something we do prior to Christmas, but the whole Christian life is one of preparation. We're preparing for today. We're preparing for tomorrow. We're preparing for the rest of this year, but we're also preparing for eternity. So we're called to be people of preparation. So how do we experience God? First of all, we prepare. That's an important thing. Then we're called to be people of renewal. So Paul writing to Titus reminds that community that we need to set aside things that are not of God and we're called to be renewed. We're called to be changed. We don't just prepare, but we're called to be renewed. And we do that in every aspect of our life. We focus on goodness, on joy, on love, kindness. And part of being renewed is recognising there are beautiful things in our life and we want those to be the focus of what we're about. We want family to be our focus. We want community to be our focus. And a little bit like Anthony Rodriguez, who, who passed away one year ago today, he was someone of joy, someone who really liked to gather people together, but to be bring, to gather them together in joy and in happiness. And that's part of the renewal we should be spreading as well. We're being renewed in joy. So when we're feeling down, when perhaps we're feeling a bit distant, we're called to be renewed in joy. The Christian life should be one of joy. In preparation for Christmas, we have a Sunday dedicated to joy, that pink Sunday we had a few weeks back just before Christmas. But the whole Christian life is one of preparation and then it's one of renewal, renewal in joy. And then the Christian life is one of prayer. We have Jesus goes down to the Jordan, is baptised. We have a ritual, a gathering. But then we're told by St Luke, and this is one of the unique elements of Luke's gospel, his description of the baptism. We're told that Jesus, this is what we hear, when all the people had been baptised and while Jesus, after his own baptism, was at prayer, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him. Jesus was at prayer. He was experiencing a personal relationship with God. And our experience of God should be one of community. We gather together like we're doing right now. But also we have moments of silence where we speak one-to-one -one with God and that God's part of our life. We can even do that with those who've gone before us in faith as well. Sometimes people go to the cemeteries and they might um, spend time just having almost like a conversation with those um, who've come before us in faith. The life of God, we're called to have a life of prayer. And we do that as a community, but we also do that one-to-one. -one. Sometimes people come into the church and we sit, we listen, like we're doing right now. Sometimes people come outside of Mass times for silent prayer. Some come down and kneel at the, 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 the statue of the Sacred Heart or the statue of Mary, maybe light a candle for, for one of their deceased relatives, and then they talk with Jesus 
And that's not an unusual thing. That shouldn't feel, we shouldn't feel like talking to Jesus is you've got some psychological problem. No, talking to Jesus is part of who we are. That's what we're called to do. This is what Jesus does. He is a prayer. He doesn't just do this in a big ritual, a big gathering. He also does this in moments of silence and quiet. And it's in these moments of silence we're told by Luke that the heavens then were opened and the Holy Spirit came. We've just begun a new year. Let us commit to being people of preparation, preparing our lives for this coming year, preparing our lives for eternity. Let us be people of renewal and let us also commit this year to finding opportunities to gather like Jesus did with John the Baptist and others for ritual, but also finding opportunities for silent personal prayer. Silent personal prayer doesn't just happen. We have to commit to this. We have to make time in our life to just put other things out of our hands, perhaps turn off the radio or turn off the phone and have a few moments in silence with God to listen. And when we listen, we might hear the words that come from the heavens for Jesus because these words are said to us as well. You are my son, the beloved. My favour rests on you. We are children of God. And God loves us. We are God's loved children. And God's favour rests upon each and every one of us. We are part of this beautiful family, this family of God. Let us listen. Find opportunities for silence and prayer. Let us be renewed in the ways of goodness, the commitment to being people of saints. And let us prepare for today, tomorrow, for the rest of this year and the rest of eternity, making, as we heard in the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, prepare in the wilderness a way for the Lord. How can we do this? Let's do this in the way of Jesus, the way of joy, the way of love, the way of goodness.